Anastasia chapter 18. And him was life, and the life was the light of men. The Gospel of John. Upon my request, Anastasia took me to see the ringing cedar, which her grandfather and great-grandfather had talked about. It was not very far from the glade. The tree, approximately 40 meters tall, rose slightly higher than its neighbors, but its principal distinguishing feature was the aureole radiating from its glistening crown. Similar to the halos around the faces of saints depicted on icons, the aureole was not even, it pulsated, and at its upper tip one could see a thin ray of light beaming into the infinity of the heavens. The, the, spect the spectacle was dazzling and absolutely charming. At Anastasia's suggestion, I pressed the palms of my hands to its trunk. I could hear a ringing or crackling noise, comparable to what one might hear standing under a high voltage transmission line, only more resonant. It was I who happened to discover a way to send its energy back into space and then have it distributed here on Earth, Anastasia told me. You see how its bark has been torn off in various places? places? That is where the bear was climbing it. It was quite a challenge to get her to carry me up to the first branch. branches. I clung onto the fur on her neck. She would climb and then let out a roar climb and war. After reaching the lowest branches, I was able to clamper up from the branch to branch, right to the top. I sat there for two days and thought of everything I could to save the tree. I stroked the tree and shouted up into the sky, but nothing helped. Then grandfather and great-grandfather arrive. You can imagine the scene. There they were standing down below reprimanding me and demanding that I climb down. I in turn demanded that they tell me what could be done with the tree, how to save the ringing cedar since nobody was cutting it down. They did not talk, but I felt that they knew the answer. Grandfather, old trickster that he was, tried to lure me down, promising to help me establish a connection with a certain woman. I had been unable to reach on my own. This was a woman I very much wanted to help. Earlier, Grandfather would only be annoyed by my desire to spend so much time on her instead of doing other things. But I knew that he could not help me, as Great Grandfather had twice tried to do this behind Grandfather's back. And he fell too. At that point, Grandfather really began putting up a fuss. He sees hold of a branch, run around the cedar tree, and beat the air with the branch, shouting that, I, shouting that I was the most hair-brained member of the family, that I was acting illogically, that I refused to accept sound advice, and that he would give my bottom a good whipping. And again, he beat the air with a branch. Now that was a real humming of a threat. And even great-grandfather burst out laughing. I too gave a hearty laugh. In doing so, I inadvertently broke a branch at the top, and a glow began emanating from it, and I heard great-grandfather's voice, serious, commanding, and entreating all at the same time. Don't touch anything more, little one. Come down very careful. You've already done enough. I obeyed and climbed down. Climbed down. Great-grandfather silently embraced me. Trembling all over, he pointed at the tree on which more and more branches were beginning to glow, then a ray formed pointing upward. Now the ringing cedar would, cedar would not burn up. Through its little way, ray, it would give everything it had saved up for the past 500 years to people and to the earth. Great-grandfather explained that the ray had formed in the exact spot where I had shouted upward and had inadvertently broken a branch while I was laughing. Great-grandfather said if I had touched a ray emanating from the broken branch, my brain would have exploded, exploded as there was too much energy and information in this little ray. That was exactly how my papa and mama had perished. Anastasia put her hands on the mighty trunk of the ringing cedar she had saved 
and pressed her cheek against it. After pausing for a while, she continued her story. They, my papa and mama, once came up upon a ringing cedar, just like this one. Only mama had been doing everything a little differently. Since she did not know, she had climbed up into a neighboring tree from which she reached out and touched one of the lower branches of the ringing cedar and broke it off, inadvertently exposing herself to the rays which flame up out of the broken branch. The branch had been pointing downward and the ray went down into the earth. It is very bad, very harmful when such entity falls into the earth. When Papa came, he saw this ray and saw my mama who had been left hanging, one hand still firmly grasping the, um, the um, ordinary cedar branch. In the other hand, she held the broken branch of the ringing cedar. Papa no doubt had an immediate grasp of everything that had happened. He climbed up the ringing cedar right to the top. Grandfather and great-grandfather saw him break off the upper branches, but they did not glow. While more and more of the lower ones began glowing, great-grandfather said that Papa realized that it would not be long before he would never be able to climb down. The upward beaming ray with its pulsating glow fell to appear. All that was going on was more and more thin rays shining downward. An upward ray did, did appear when Papa broke off a large, a branch pointing up, and even though it was not glowing, he bent it and pointed it at himself. When it did flame up, Papa still managed to unclasp his hand. The branch straightened and the rays from the branch directed itself toward the sky, and then the pulsating aureole form great-grandfather said that at that last moment of his life, Papa Brains was able to take an enormous flood of energy and information, and that he was able in some incredible way to clear his mind of all previously accumulated information, and so was able to gain the time required to unclasp his hands and direct the branch upward just before his brain exploded. Anastasia once more struck the cedar trunk with her hands, once more pressed her cheek against it, and stood, stock still, smiling, listening to the ringing cedar, ringing of the cedar. Anastasia, that cedar not oil. Are its healing properties stronger or weaker than the pieces of the ringing cedar? The same, provided the nuts are gathered at the proper time and with the proper attitude toward the cedar provided the tree bestows them of itself. Do you know how to do that? Yes, I do. Will you tell me? All right, I should tell you. 